Zebra mussels have been a species of concern of late. The Game and Fish Department has been monitoring for them in the Red River because they're known to be in the Red River drainage in Minnesota. A month ago, Manitoba contacted us and said they had found unusually large numbers of zebra mussel villagers in the Red River at Emerson, which is right across the border in Canada, and they wondered if we had any new data or revised information that would indicate that villagers had moved downstream in the Red River in North Dakota. Uh, so we expedited our sampling through Andre Delorme at Valley City State. Uh, got the results back a week or so ago, and lo and behold, yes, we do have a lot of zebra mussel villagers uh, in six sites that we sampled up and down the Red River. So apparently they are abundant in the entire length of the Red River in North Dakota as well as in Canada. A zebra mussel villager is the immature stage, or the early life stage, of a zebra mussel. They're microscopic, almost look like a little clam under a microscope, but they're extremely small in the early stages. Once the zebra mussel adults distribute those villagers into the water column, they're just free-floating and drift downstream. Uh, we've monitored in, uh, for five years previously, and we found a uh, few villagers at the one site at Wapaton in the past, uh, including as, lately, as recently as last fall. They were last summer. They were found in the in the Red River at Wapaton, but only a few, actually three, three villagers were observed or detected last year, uh, none the previous two years. So basically we had uh, villagers and zebra mussel noted at one site only once in the last three years and, and this year by comparison again hundreds and hundreds of them detected at each of the six sites that we sampled. Manitoba has been monitoring for villagers on the Red River at Emerson just across the border for 12 years and never found them before in any numbers. And this year found them to be several hundred strong in their samples that they detected there which indicates literally millions and billions of them in the Red River to, to detect them in the sample that's taken. Um, <clears throat> there's obviously reached a critical mass someplace or another. There's some source of uh, villagers uh, as an adult population that's been established either in the Otter Tail River or in the Red River itself. Uh, we're certainly going to be doing some more looking for some sort of source of adults that could produce this number of villagers. There really isn't much we can do about it uh, since the Red River is so large with such a large volume of flow and since there's an established population in the Otter Tail, Otter Tail River that will yield villagers into the Red River every year they're going to drift down in. Uh, again there's no real good treatment method for zebra mussels or villagers. Uh, we basically have to just recognize that they're there and then do what, <coughs> do our job and do as well as we can to prevent their movement into other water bodies. There will really be two groups of users that will be affected. Uh, the recreationists, the water-based users, uh, all we're requesting of them is to be extremely vigilant to make sure that they remove all standing water uh, do all the things that are existing requirements request that they do in terms of preventing their movements of ANS of any type and especially zebra mussels from the Red River to other water bodies in the state. That's critical. The other thing that, that may be impacted and, and certainly will down the road I suspect is that the water intakes on the river, the municipal intakes, the city water supplies and other uses of Red River water will be affected by villagers too uh, since they've been known to to get extremely abundant as adults and plug water intake lines and pumps and things. So I suspect the water users of the Red River will notice uh, if these populations develop in great numbers in the Red River itself. The regulations are already on the books, but it's extremely important that people follow them. ANS regulations require that you pull your plug, that you drain all standing water, remove vegetation, and uh, make sure that you're not moving any water in particular from one water body to the, the next one that you're planning to use. As far as zebra mussels and villagers are concerned, again they're microscopic, but any water that re residual that remains in your boat, your live wells, uh, your bilge area, all that water needs to be removed because when there's villager counts are as high as they are now, there's quite a good likelihood that water that's left in your boat could have villagers in it. Again, it's the law but it's even more incumbent now for those who use the Red River to be sure not to move any water away from it. If you do happen to discover an unusual looking mussel in the Red River or anywhere else, report it to Game and Fish. Take a picture if possible and send it in.